Hey everyone, this is Ovi from Ovi Innovation Outlet. I want to welcome you to our new video. In today's video, I want to test an app for iOS called Focus Live. Yes, I did say Focus, which I think is a play on Focus. I'm sure I'm going to mess up uh, saying that throughout the video. But this app claims that it can give your background of your videos a similar effect to portrait mode for your photos. Um, now, our phones can do portrait mode pretty well already. That's been around for a couple of generations. But um, this app says it can do that for our video backgrounds. And that potentially is a really cool feature. Um, especially, you know, uh, when you're trying to mimic the look of an actual DSLR camera or professional video gear. Um, that's not something that's generally easily done by a phone. Uh, so to start today's video, I am actually using my Sony a7 III with a 50mm 1.8 lens uh, just to show you an example um, of what it looks like going from uh, a supposedly better camera to your phone. Uh, we're going to see some of the differences in quality here as we progress through the video. Um, so once we begin, I'll let you know when we transition into the iPhone. Uh, I will put some text up on the screen to let you know uh, which camera we're using on the iPhone. I'm going to be using my iPhone 12 Pro Max that I got recently to do the recordings and I'm planning to use at least three lenses. Um, I may start off with a telephoto, then the standard lens, um, and then uh, also try the front facing camera. So I have some concerns about the quality on that one just because uh, it's generally not the best camera on the phone, but I still want to see what it's actually going to do. Uh, and, and someone actually told me that it looks like garbage, uh, just in general, so I want to know how bad does that front facing camera look. So stay with me, we're going to run through the test, we'll check it out, kind of evaluate it, and see what we come up with. Okay, so here we are with our first iPhone segment. I am using the Telephoto 2.5X lens uh, to record this particular uh, piece that you're seeing right now. Um, so the framing may be a little different. Now I do have to adjust it depending on the focal length. Uh, I was using 50 millimeters on the Sony a7 III and the 2.5X, I don't know the exact uh, millimeters, but it's within the vicinity of around there, maybe 60 or so. Um, so I do have to sort of change the framing a little bit, but I am hoping that this particular app is going to give us a nice kind of blurred and soft background similar to what we saw with the Sony. Um, and if it's able to do that, then that would be very, very impressive. Um, now, the app itself can use LiDAR if you're using the standard 1x camera lens. Uh, when you're using the ultra wide, uh, the telephoto or even the front facing camera, it cannot use LiDAR. So it just kind of relies on whatever algorithms it actually has to calculate the depth behind you. Um, so in a few moments, we will move on to the next camera lens, but hopefully what we're seeing behind us is a fairly decent looking uh, blurred background. Um, I'm gonna move around a little bit to the left and to the right, just to see if you see anything strange going on behind me um, as far as the background is concerned. Um, but hopefully that's going to look pretty smooth. Um, so in just a few moments, we're going to switch to the next iPhone camera. Okay, so now we have changed to our second camera lens on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. This is the standard 1X camera lens. So the framing may look a lot different than the last one. Um, the camera is a lot closer to me now since um, we don't have that telephoto difference behind us. So so some of the things behind me may look a little different as well, but one of the big things is that we can actually use LiDAR, the LiDAR sensor built into our pro camera. So we may want to be able to compare the background now to see if there's any difference between using LiDAR and not using LiDAR. Um, so as before, I'm going to move a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, just to see what's going to happen in the background and see if there's any difference. Um, using the different camera lenses and LiDAR versus not using LiDAR as well. Um, now the camera is really, really close to me as well. So if you could see behind the scenes, you would see that um, I'm literally about less than uh, two feet from the camera. Um, now it doesn't really make a difference necessarily, but uh, you will have to change 
uh, where you're positioning your equipment depending on the camera lenses that you're using. Okay, so let's look at this a little bit longer. Um, and then we're going to switch to probably the last camera I'm gonna use on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. This is gonna be the front facing one. Um, and this is the one that I'm really curious about how it's going to look. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so here we are on our final segment. This is using the front facing camera on our iPhone 12 Pro Max. And this is a one that um, someone has told me is supposed to look like garbage. So I'm really curious what this is gonna look like when we go back and kind of evaluate this and we see it on screen. Um, so without seeing this, um, I'm kind of concerned that maybe there's gonna be like either a lot of noise or the resolution's gonna look poor um, or something else is gonna happen that's going to look significantly different uh, than what we would see on the rear cameras. Um, so, um, same with my other test. I'm going to move a little bit to the left and to the right just to see what's going to happen. Now again, it cannot use a uh, LiDAR uh, for the front facing camera as there is no LiDAR sensor in that orientation. Um, but it's doing whatever it normally does, um, the Focus app, to kind of hopefully get us some decent depth behind us because ordinarily we have almost zero uh, blurring behind us when we're just using the regular camera app. So. If this can do something pretty decent, again, I'm going to be pretty impressed and pretty blown away um, uh, for the app. It only has, if you want to buy a lifetime subscription to it, so to speak, um, you can do a one-time purchase for $14.99 currently. And, uh, you know, if it works as well as it says it does, that may be quite a bargain. Um, okay, so let's take all this footage back in the studio. We're going to take a, take a look at it, do some evaluation, and then we'll come back and talk about some of our findings. Okay, so I just got back from looking at the footage on my computer, and I can tell you some of the results were surprising. Um, so starting with the iPhone, starting with the iPhone telephoto lens, I'm going to say that was pretty close to what we're seeing right now, now that we're back on the Sony a7 III with a 50 millimeter lens at f1.8. I tried to mimic that with the Focus app and it came pretty close. Um, you know, the framing of course was a little different because the focal length, focal length uh, was not quite the same. Um, but you know, overall it was pretty, pretty impressive uh, for what the app could do. Um, the second test where we were using the standard uh, lens on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, uh, you know, had to bring the camera a lot closer to me um, because the distance was different not using um, a zoom, a zoom lens. So I think that uh, looked okay too. Uh, you know, of course I noticed that the closer the camera got to me, the brighter uh, the image was. It may just have to do with the distance and relative to this continuous light that I have here in front of me. Um, now some of that may be able to be tweaked in post-production uh, and I may try to balance some of that out um, when you see it in the final video. Uh, and then finally, we ended with the, the iPhone uh, front-facing camera, and <clears throat> this is one that I thought was going to look pretty horrible, but it actually turned out looking pretty good. Uh, now, I wasn't too crazy about, you know, the background. Uh, it wasn't compressed very well. Uh, you know, we did have the soft focus, and that worked well from the Focus app, um, but just in relation to how everything was sort of positioned behind me, um, I do kind of prefer um, the telephoto lens. Uh, or even the 50 millimeter from the Sony A7 III. You know, it does look pretty good too, depending on where you have it positioned. Um, <clears throat> so overall, what would I say about this Focus app? Um, I'm pretty impressed with it, but you know, there are some pros and cons to it. Uh, the cons being that, you know, this is not recorded in real time. So after you record your footage with the Focus app, you have to edit it and then you have to render it as well. So this adds you know, a lot of extra time to your workflow. Um, so if you were recording a lot of videos or longer videos, you know, anything over 15 minutes, uh, it is going to be quite time consuming. Uh, my phone also got really, really hot while I was rendering the videos. Um, felt like it was going to melt at one point. Um, so those are all things you'd want to consider. Um, you know, if you're going to be doing this a lot, um, you know, certainly you're going to want to have some kind of a mid-range to professional camera with you, uh, you know, to do it correctly and make your life a lot easier. Uh, but, you know, in a pinch, 
if you have your phone with you and generally we always do have it with us you know it's nice to have some of these alternatives um, just to use if you don't have any other choices um, but i'll continue to monitor the app and maybe in the future they'll make even more improvements um, and then maybe one day apple will be able to do this natively uh, with their video app so that we don't have to render anything in post-production um, so it's it's cool. I was impressed. Uh, hopefully you think it's pretty cool too. Let me know down in the comments, um, you know, what you thought uh, about some of the footage you got to compare with me here today. So be sure to subscribe to me if you haven't already. Uh, if you want to click on that notification bell just so you'll get notices whenever I have new content come out. Um, you know, I haven't done anything in a long time, but I'm hopeful I'm going to be making some more videos here pretty soon. And I do appreciate um, your comments and you supporting me as well and this channel. Uh, so take care and I'll see you again in the near future.